program number 86. Three, two, one. Land and Water Stewardship Week. That's from April 30th to May 7th. And the theme of it is Renewing the Living Earth. I'm going to talk with Devon Woodland, the president of a national farmers organization. Devon, as a farmer and rancher, not just as the president of a farm organization, you kind of have a ringside seat at this renewing the earth. What's that all about? I think during the 1990s, uh, among many key issues that must be dealt with by decision makers, the environmentalists must concentrate on clean air and clean water. And I don't suppose that we really appreciate the value of either until we are faced with having to do without. Uh, water is the lifeblood of the land, and the land is the lifeblood of the people. And so uh, we simply have to uh, spend time necessary to design a program, create an incentive and a reward for those who practice soil and water conservation. When you mention incentive and reward, is there anything that uh, legislation can do? Uh, we certainly recommend that uh, uh, soil and water conservation be a part of that debate and that uh, uh, an incentive be uh, offered to those who practice it uh, uh, more intently. The crops will be planted. The critical time will be uh, July and August when that uh, plant is drawing so heavily on the uh, topsoil moisture and we must receive timely, adequate moisture during that time. It cannot come rapidly in a cloudburst runoff, would incur, and we must have slow, steady, extended rains at the proper time for uh, the crops to uh, grow, mature, and replenish our food supply. On a network broadcast, you mentioned that there's a real danger when the level of the ponds gets too low. What kind of a danger is that? Well, when we look through the Midwest, we do have uh, ponds, uh, conservation ponds for uh, livestock. And uh, those ponds are filled with runoff from the fields. And we have used a lot of chemicals, herbicides, insecticides. And that runoff goes into those ponds. And then as the pond begins to dry up, we see a heavy concentration of chemical in the bottom of those ponds. And as livestock return to them uh, for uh, watering, uh, then uh, we run into health problems with the livestock. And so uh, we see uh, how vital water is to the sustaining of life, whether it be human or animal. And the National Farmers Organization supports this Land and Water Stewardship Week? There's no question, but what we uh, as agriculture producers. I've been talking with Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. Phil Allen for Here's Info, and that for today is something to think about. Number 87, three, Two, one. Our guest today on Here's Info is Lana Pauls, editor of the NFO Reporter. She's going to talk about a series she's been doing on the subject of the growing monopoly in the food industry, especially in packing. As I covered in the first part, four firm concentration is occurring in, in beef packing and now is occurring in hog slaughter. And in 1977, for instance, the four firms uh, controlled 32.2% of the industry. By 1986, in just eight years, that rose to 56%. And then in one year, 1987, was absolutely deadly to the packing industry. ConAgra, which is one of the big three, acquired E.A. Miller, Monfort, and Swift Independent. And XL, another of the big three, acquired Sterling Beef. And now that for four firm concentration increased to 68% which is just unprecedented in any other industry. And the reason the NFO reporter is doing these articles is that this is going to affect the welfare and the whole world of transactions for farmers, isn't it? Right. It's already begun impacting uh, farmers' wages. And they say in, in studies that have been done that for every 10 percentage point increase in the four-firm concentration ratio, cattle prices fall anywhere from 10 cents a hundredweight to 23 cents a hundredweight. And, for instance, this underpayment or this power that these companies have is cutting the payment to farmers one-half to one percent in most years, and it represents $50 million annually to uh, cattle feeders. How come this is happening? Antitrust laws in our country are not being enforced. Studies have indicated that many of these mergers 
that are occurring may be in viola violation of our trust laws, and they have just not been opposed. And at this point, uh, consolidation has become so rampant that uh, where do you start? What can livestock people do about this? They are continuing to produce like they produced in the 1960s and the 1970s before the specialization occurred in the industry. If they would organize an organization that does have the uh, ability to sort and to uh, negotiate higher prices. That with good sorting, to meet their standards, they'll pay premiums? Right. As farmers get together and sell together, then you'll be one of the bigs in supplying. Absolutely right. I've been talking with Lana Pauls, editor of the NFO Reporter, and uh, the reporter is doing a series on this subject, the monopoly and the consolidation in the packing industry. Phil Allen for NFO's Here's Info. And that for today is something to think about. Number 88, 3, 2, 1. It's actually the first week in May we're talking about. From April 30th to May 7th, there's going to be Land and Water Stewardship Week. I'm visiting with Willis Rowell, assistant to the president of the National Farmers Organization. Why do they use a word like stewardship, Willis? The dictionary defines stewardship as managing someone else's property. And this really is, in fact, what the farmers do, any generation of farmers do. They don't own the land, even though they live on it and are paying for it. It belongs to the next generation of people. And this generation of people got the land in pretty good shape. That's I, right. I think, I think we deserve, or our children and grandchildren deserve to get it from this generation in equally good condition. Someone on the land, a farmer, a grower, a livestockman says, look, this is my land. Um, I have title to it. Maybe I got children. But why don't they let me just farm it any way I want to? The land is here forever. The next generation must have it for their food supply. They must have the water supply in good condition so they can be healthy and, and feel secure that the water supply is safe. Part of the 1985 Farm Act is a clean water, clean air provision. And we, we say we're going to try and live up to it. Have we been making any mistakes about the land? It just came in the mail today. Soil erosion uh, is at a serious levels, serious levels. In 1984 alone, $1.1 billion worth of topsoil food elements just got washed away, and it's gone forever. Uh, the, water, the damage to water in dollar value in 1985 was $2 billion. So yes, I think we have been making mistakes. We know that we've got a lot of areas in the country now that are having a difficult time finding pure water. And the chemical residues in our food that we're hearing so much about uh, the, on the apples and with just about everything, it's just become a matter of national concern. OK, I think most people listening to us, whether they farm farmland or not, or just live in the rural area, what can they do? We all consume water. We all consume food. Right. I think this week, from April 30 through May 7th, we should all just stop for a moment or two and take a look and see what we're doing that's polluting the land, that's polluting our water supplies, and then make a pledge to ourselves to help correct it. Willis Rowell, assistant to the president of the NFO. I'm Phil Allen for NFO's Here's Info. That for today is something to think about. Number 89, 3, 2, 1. When the NFO held its national convention at Lexington, Kentucky, the convention delegates authorized the move to Ames, Iowa. That's moving the headquarters from Corning to Ames. Rini Nice was in on the planning stage and the studies that went into this. Uh, Rini is here now. He's the vice president of the NFO. Update us, will you, Rini, on the move to Ames? Well, Phil, we're excited about the move. The National Board of Directors, uh, they've looked at several sites in Ames and prioritized those sites, and we're in the midst of negotiations right now. We're in the final selection process for an architect. Uh, we've also uh, chosen a project manager. And, you know, when you get into a new field, rather than having to learn all the terminology and all the technology that's out there, and that's much more like what NFO is saying to the farmer, why become a 
you know, an expert in marketing and bargaining, why not allow NFO to do it for you? That's what we're saying to this project manager in the construction of a building. We went out and hired what we consider to be one of the best men in Iowa. We brought him on board, and he's now a member of our team. And so as we move through this, he'll explain to us what, what we need to know in order to make good, solid decisions. So we're choosing good people. Our next step now will be to choose a general contractor. I think one of the most important messages that's come across to me in the last two or three months and that's the fact of the image and the prestige of the National Farmers Organization has in the state of Iowa. The governor uh, of Iowa, uh, Terry Branstad, uh, came to the November meeting of the National Board of Directors and indicated that the NFO is the only national general farm organization that has an office in the state of Iowa. I mean a national office. And so he doesn't want to lose that. He wants to keep that here. You know, the Economic Development Commission voted 10 to nothing here a few weeks ago awarding NFO a forgivable loan of $400,000. The city of Ames has come up with some additional funding to match along with that. And so when you look at that type of commitment, it really makes you feel good inside to know that you're part of an organization that's not only needed in agriculture by farmers and ranchers, but recognized as to the type of job that we're doing out here. Is there a timetable you can say, when will the NFO make the move? Well, our goal right now, Phil, is to achieve the completion of the construction of the building by June of 1990. We put together a relocation committee as appointed by the board. And as we move forward uh, jointly and, and separately and finally bringing it all back together for that final approval by the board, uh, we believe we'll be on target. I've been talking with Rene Neese, Vice President of the National Farmers Organization. Phil Allen for Here's Info. And that for today is something to think about. Number 90. Three, two, one. Renewing the Earth is a theme for Soil and Water Stewardship Week, April 30th through May 7th. For today's commentary, here's Kathy Morrison, NFO consumer reporter, with a special poem. Consider renewal. Be still, listen, and surely you may hear Mother Earth crying for what she must bear. Polluted water running through every vein. Parched, weary land showing the strain. Tree roots clutching at eroding soil. Rivers gasping from industry spilled oil. Mother Earth softly crying in sorrow, knowing there may not be a tomorrow. Visions of nations with people to feed. Hungry children reaching out in need. Mother Earth giving up in despair, too drained of strength to repair. Yet life-saving methods can be used to restore land so thoughtlessly abused, to begin the replenishment needed now with calloused hands and sweat-stained brow. The time is now. Renewal must begin before our natural resources come to an end. Renewal of water, land, and trees must be employed for life on this earth to be enjoyed. For our children's sake, for our future's sake, we must begin to right the abuse and mistake of short-sighted vision, no planning at all. Be still, listen quietly, and hear the call. Consider renewal. Consider it now. Kathy Morrison, NFO Consumer Reporter for Soil and Water Stewardship Week. Remember, our future generation depends on what we do today with our soil, water, and air. Don Mack for Here's Info, and that's something to think about.